Hello there, and welcome to the House of Dog. I am Sunny, also known as Doghead on Discord, and I am playing Carino in this video. I am commentating uh, after uh, after the fact uh, because I was unable to record my uh, audio in the morning. Um, but in this game, I'm playing a kind of off-meta pick with uh, Gaius Mohiam, uh, the, the Reverend Mother, on Carino. Uh, her ability is that if you change one of your, one of the uh, resolutions in the Lensrad uh, with your Imperial Mandate, your votes count for double, which is quite powerful. But once you realize that a lot of the mandates that you can change with Imperial Mandate is not... Sorry, resolutions that you can change with Imperial Mandate is not that good. Um, you realize why she's not usually picked, but I decided to try the girl boss team. Maybe find uh, some new plays that I, I would otherwise be unaware of. Um, but I, I think after this game I'm going to just go with good old Zeddy Zoom, Zoom Garon. Um, the 15% the military power per truce is, I think, just invaluable in most situations. Um, as we'll see later in the game, I, it probably would have helped a lot more than um, the, the lens red manipul manipulation I was doing. Uh, but anyways, uh, I was playing Turin on Fremen, Kuf on Atreides, and Fox the Demon King on Vernius. Um, Turin, of course, is a very well-known player, and uh, streamer, and YouTuber, and all that. Um, he was uh, he was playing quite well, and he's, he's very experienced with the game. Uh, Kuf and Fox the Demon King are fairly new. Uh, but they played uh, really, really well, uh, for the most part. Uh, everybody made some terrible mistakes this game, but that's just how Dune is. Uh, I don't think anybody uh, has played a perfect game of Dune ever, as a, especially FFA. It's, it's very hard to um, very hard to account for all the variables that uh, that don't go in in a in an FFA. Anyways, uh, I am currently trying to gauge my situation with uh, all the territory available to me and with how much uh, how much I can maybe get away with in the long run. Um, as you can see, I have uh, easy access to quite a few uh, special regions. Um, I am also in a very comfortable position in the uh, the edge of the map. Usually, Carino is uh, very prone to base diving because you only get um, three four three quarters of the HP on your main base as uh, every other faction, uh, which means your your base can be killed quite fast. Uh, honestly, much faster than any other. Um, any other faction obviously but of course you get two of them um, the thing about a second base is usually and in, in this game we'll see why I would position the second base more defensively I think in most games it's uh, worth it to be a bit more conservative with your second base so that you have an easier time um, defending it, uh, usually the, the, it's a good idea to, to single out one player, one of your neighbors, and, and maybe use it against them, not like base dropping them on, on their main base, because that's just, you know, a blood feud that probably will lose both of you the game, unless you're ex extremely um, uh, sure that they will not fight back. But if they're not fighting back, I don't think it's a, it's a game anyway. Uh, so honestly, I, I, in, in a serious game of Dune Spice Wars, I, I would never do a, a base rush. It's simply not worth it. Most of the time, you're, it's just going to lose the game for the both of you. 
But anyway, you can see me setting up my uh, my early villages. I am going to try and focus on uh, on making a reasonable economy without too much spice in this game. I find that um, that being reliant on spice economy is is kind of a, a weak point of of, uh, of a actually a lot of factions um, especially Fremen and Vernius who are both in this game and to some extent Carino like even with Irulan uh, Irulan sorry um, I think your spice production is, is going to determine your economic situation a lot of the time so you want to be well, you you either want to rush your second and third spice so that um, you're very comfortable in your economic situation, or you find ways around um, doing that. I, f for this purpose, most of my games and, and in this game as well, I decided to go with um, with integrated costs early on because it gives you a lot of cash for. Uh, for not much investment and later on it does it, it, do, it does become very useful um, especially with the major buildings you build uh, that 30% um, upkeep reduction is, is, is very very good I think um, yeah I took the early plascrete here I Realized after building those uh, those research those research stations that I was going to struggle on plastic if I don't, so I was uh, very quickly uh, going for that. And then I saw that well of riches in in the the top right corner, top left corner. I was very happy to see that, especially because as I, as I said, I was trying to build. Um, an economy that didn't rely on spice too much because well, usually when when spice tax comes up the, the resolution not the uh, the actual mechanic um, it usually gets put on on Carino because Carino's early economy is kind of haggard um, even even more so than Fremen I'd say especially Fremen runs Stilgar uh, they can have a pretty surprisingly strong, uh, surprisingly strong economy early on. Um, and yeah, I, I've been playing quite a bit of Fremen recently, so I was curious if, if you could use the Desolation as a deep desert. Uh, turns out you cannot, which is not as surprising. Um, it'll be a bit powerful if that was an option. Especially because in most games where it shows up, it is uh, on the edge of the map, uh, as, as it is here. So it's very easy to, to uh, take your territories around it. Um, but yeah, here I was contemplating uh, getting the Imperial Base in first, instead of Vell of Riches. Getting the early manpower boost is very, very good, but I decided against it eventually. Um, I'm also trying to collect as many POIs as I can, as fast as I can. Usually, I think the, the quote-unquote meta pick, or at least the, the thing, the, the counselor people like to pick, pick the most is Fenring, but I think he's very overrated right now. It mostly gives you something to do for the early game. Um, it's like a mini game, and that's why people like him so much. I think I don't tend to think the the tempo is is really all 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 there. Um, although in in this game, I I was struggling to get that POI in the bottom. Uh, the one that gives you authority for Plascrete. And eventually I don't, don't even get it. Um, so maybe he would have been useful there. 
Um, I think a lot of uh, other people I've talked to claim that he's very good for those authority POIs, and I tend to agree with that as well. Um, but yeah, there's not much happening in these early, early um, months of the game. I was also trying to figure out a way to rush out my second base. Um, I basically had two options to pick here. One of them was the fuel cells next to Desolation, and the other one was uh, a more risky and, and central location, a spice field near, um, near the sink. Eventually I went with the spice field, I think that was a mistake. Uh, I think probably I should have uh, accepted not having the, that fuel cell region, especially because as you can see there's quite a few around me, like that's three fuel cells. There's, there's no way I was going to be fuel starved in this game, and especially if I take that Vale of Riches, then the fuel cells behind it are very well protected. It was a, it was a I think, a, a blunder early on from me, and it kind of determined the game for me at least. The, the others were we're having uh, quite a brawl about uh, over who was going to win, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, but uh, in this game, the the special thing, I think, or the reason why I picked this game to be the first video, um, there's another game where I, I made a domination victory with Carino that I had recorded, or at least uh, a friend of mine recorded it, and I had the opportunity to make commentary but I chose this game because you can see in this game how um, tough Corino is as a faction how how much of a beating uh, you can take before um, before it, the game is really really over um, partly I wanted to to show this off because these days, and I, I do fall into this as well, but I usually just use, use it to manipulate the lobby. But a lot of people genuinely fall into thinking like, oh, I can't win anymore. There's no way I can, you know, pull out a back pocket and win somehow. But even in this game, if I was a, a little bit uh, more aware of, of, just, of my surroundings, I, I did have a chance at the very end. Um, to 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 take the game, and and a, a bit, of, bit of a spoiler, I do not win this game, um, unfortunately. But I I don't think that's bad. I I, I think this is a really fun game. Otherwise, um, it really showed how militarily militarily oppressive Carino is. I think. Um, I think a lot of people, th th the very um, uh, reasonably so, think that Carino is probably the best faction this patch. I tend to not fully agree with this, mostly because they have a hard time closing out games. Like they don't have the the quick hedge push that like Atreides and smugglers have, or even Fremen have. Um, because of the the way their authority manic mechanics work, like uh, having just to to pay exorbitant amounts of authority to take one region is is well, it sucks, um, and and you can't really do any big moves in the end game because of that, unless you made space for yourself previously. Which is also very hard to do as Carino. I think uh, Fremen have a much easier time with all their liberation mechanics, um, creating that space for themselves and then taking that territory that pushes them to to victory eventually. Uh, so does Vernius, right? With 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 the, their um, assassination mechanics, um, I think. Especially, especially um, early to mid game, a quick assassination rush can help Vernius carve out a lot of territory. 
that they would otherwise have no ac access to. Like, even if the, the target of the assassination abandons uh, the infiltration cells to try and overcome the uh, uh, to try and overcome the. Um, the assassination attempt itself, I think it's still very worth it for Bernius to, to take those regions later on. Here's a little trick I was looking out for where to find rocks to walk through my with my flamers. I've become very uh, adept at sand walking in this game because I've lost, God, hundreds of of command points of troops to, to worms in this game. I think a lot of us have. Uh, it's one of the most ambivalent mechanics, I guess, in this game. People are not very happy with it most of the time because it's fully random. And in theory, if you carry an ornithopter with your army like constantly, um, you have a pretty good chance of avoiding losing significant amount of them to uh, to the worm but even then a lot of the times it's it's you're just screwed like there's no uh, there's no way out uh, unless you have like a, um, unless you pre thunter your uh, 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 surrounding region so that the region you're walking through say is safe although I've noticed that that is also not always true Sometimes, even when it is marked as safe, some regions will always uh, still pop a worm. Probably, uh, worm's nest is is the highest on the, on that list. Um, and I've I've noticed that sometimes, uh, if you accidentally walk into the region that is being thumpered. Um, it, the worm will follow you outside of the region and, and still eat your troops, so keep that in mind. Uh, also, as, as I said, I'm, I'm taking that Vale of Riches to boost my economy. I don't really want to go Chome here. I would have taken Zungaron if I was going to Chome here. Um, the, the free Imperial Mandate is it is it mandate? I remember uh, the the fact that lets you give other factions sort of cars and you get yes, gold for kills um, is is really really good uh, to earn some quick cash from other factions warring them uh, warring each other. Uh, of course, in this game, I did not have the chance to to do that because I was the target and most of the call of most of the aggression um, I think that's also a, a fault fault of mine that I tend to um, go for that early lead and and hope that it carries me through the game uh, but it does work out a lot of the time um, especially getting an early passive hedge lead is I think very important in how the game is right now. Um, it's why I would prefer if maybe passive hedge was reduced or even maybe removed from the game. It's it's really like determines who wins most most of the time. Um, even if Bernius does obfuscate craft workshops. Um, because you already had a big stockpile from previous, uh, from from previous to the obfuscation, it still uh, gives you a huge boost uh, compared to your opponents. So uh, here I'm trying to micro my flamers uh, so that they're hitting every target, but uh, I missed click and don't hit the guy on the back quite funny. Uh, eventually I'm raiding this region because I I realized this is the candidate for um, for my base drop. So this is something that Corino should and, and I think most players do a lot um, is, is raiding your base target so that you can get that extra bit of cash and as you saw there just pushed me over 3000 so I could drop the base. 
Um, so as the kids say, um, so yeah, that eventually is going to turn out to be a mistake. Uh, it's a very greedy drop, I think. Um, I don't think it was very, it, it was worth the price of admission. Um, I, I knew from this point on that I was going to be a target for the, for the whole game. I even thought that that was the first uh, Fremen raiding army is going to co come for me. Um, it would have been very foolish, but I didn't know how much CP uh, command points, how many command points um, Fremen has built up by that point. Um, because of uh, the, the unique mechanics of Fremen, where you can take uh, early, it's not desert watchers, it's desert knowledge, something along those lines, is, is the tech. Um, it's the second tech on, on in the green tree that lets you have um, knowledge in regions where you have a wind trap equal to the amount of wind in that region, which can very easily boost your early to mid game tech uh, that Fremen can then use to build up a huge army early game and then bully everybody around them. Turing did not end up going for that this game. Um, I usually don't go for that uh, either. I think it's asking to be uh, to be antagonized. But also, like I'm, I'm also antagonized anyway. So sometimes it, it might be better. Uh, I also was very greedy with my tech here. I think I only took uh, recruitment initiative and parallel training because the uh, because the lands red resolution was there. Otherwise, I probably would have kept going down uh, green tech um, and taking those early craft shops. But I'm, I'm building them quite late in this game. Um, well, late comparatively. But still. Um, if I would have built them earlier, they would have given a lot bigger, bigger, a much bigger of a boost, probably, and that would have helped uh, in the end game. That is what it is. I also noticed this guy does not survive <laughs> the road back from the desolation. I think he barely dies just as he reaches the border, which, just as he reaches the border, which is sad. Um, it's sometimes there's a few visual bugs. It happens to White Rift as well, where the region does not color correctly. Like if if you can see White Rift right now on the screen, it's next to sync. The, the polar sink. Um, it sometimes is, is not colored white. It's just normal desert color, which does look good, but it also makes it harder to tell which uh, special region it is just from a glance. As you can see, uh, the desolation just looks like normal desert on this map, which was a bit confusing there. Um, I thought the DPOI I was gathering was, was not inside of the desolation, but honestly, 30 manpower for some money at this point of the game is fine. It, it wasn't such a huge waste. As you can see, here's what I was talking about. The, the Plascrete uh, for authority POI was I trying to, to grab because, as you can see, I don't have a lot of authority generation, which is also one of the things that... Uh, Carino is not very good at um, authority generation. Authority basically is the resource that lets you capture villages. Um, and uh, unfortunately, Carino is probably one of, if not the worst faction um, for authority generation. Smugglers might be, a, might be worse in some cases, but I think they make up for it by being much easier to play tall. At least I think. Um, 
you can run a lot fewer regions uh, than with Karina. Like even even <clears throat> sorry, even with Karina, you sometimes um, you sometimes want to expand as far as as you can and grab as much territory as as uh, as you possibly can. But with smugglers here, you, you can run on a very, very sparse territory, I think. Anyway, um, at this point, I, I am trying to expand um, up to 10,000 hedge um, hegemony, because at 10,000, you gain um, you gain access to your heroes and as well as uh, usually fairly large bonuses for most factions. I think with Karina is very meh, but getting your hero is, is huge uh, in most games. I think this is why it's advised to at least start with a hedge rush. Um, in this game, I. I build research center quite late, which is not ideal. Usually you want it to be like one of your first buildings um, so that you can get to that 10k hegemony real fast and then um, use the use the advantage and kind of time your um, time your advantage so that you can maybe bully one of your neighbors or if you don't want to do that at least have a better chance of defending from from others like most of the, most of the time in this game i think um preparing for war uh so that you can have peace is is uh is the ideal as you can see i had the opportunity to build a research center there instead of uh, instead of uh, administrative hall, and I think I should have probably um, because that would have bumped me up almost 10k, and I would have had an easy time getting uh, getting uh, my hero then and getting started on on uh, maybe fighting Atreides a bit. Um, Early, early on, the, the main two targets to fight um, are Atreides and Corino. Corino is, is not as fragile in the early game anymore, I think. I think the, the recent patches and the, the combat update, the combat of, uh, rework, made them quite tough comparatively uh, to the other factions early game. Uh, obviously, they're not going to stand up to like a full 65 command point from an army early game or a full 65 command point smuggler's army early game, but they can at least uh, protect themselves for the most part, unlike Ikez or Atreides. Yeah, um, Atreides should be targeted early game, especially with with uh, the authority juggle to, uh, to cheese that they can do, where they start peacefully annexing a territory and then um, time it with another peaceful annex so that they can uh, keep building up authority over their uh, authority cap limit. Um, if you've seen the finals in in Turin's most recent tournament, um, I think you're aware of how potentially devastating that that cheese is. It can easily net you between seven to ten k 
hegemony in a spike, which is, I think, ridiculous and just completely ruins the flow of the game. So I hope they fix that soon rather than later. Um, but yeah, it's not the most engaging mechanic, I'd say. Uh, you cannot see it coming. You don't really have any counterplay unless you start um, raiding every neutral village. But even then, once you break the uh, the annexation the first time, um, they can still uh, start it back up immediately. So unless um, unless you find a way to uh, uh, sort of um, to not pillage it but still make it unavailable it's not exactly a, a, a working tactic so they, it doesn't really have much of a counter um, but at least you can do that much uh, if you've ever if you ever find yourself in a game with Atreides and uh, don't know how to stop them from that big hedge spike going through neutrals and, and raiding them is, is an option. It slows them down, doesn't give you the... Uh, it doesn't stop them, but it's good enough. Here I was checking who was on how much hedge because I don't want to be too far ahead uh, just yet. I think this is a mistake. I think if I commit to a he uh, hegemony rush, or if you commit to a hegemony rush, you should always just go full rush. There's no point in, in trying to, like, you know, obfuscate. Uh, haha. How much hegemony are you actually making? Um, or how much hegemony you potentially have? Um, because uh, the, the, the lobby is, like... Even if, it, if the lobby is not especially like high skill level, they they usually tend to still have um, enough of an understanding of the game to know that, yeah, you should probably attack Karina at that point. Um, especially because, as, as, as I said, Karina's late game army is incredibly oppressive especially once they get access to artillery drones. Uh, I think Vernius um, especially has a good time countering them. Um, if they go the, the artillery or artillery heavy route, um, which is usually going to be when they also take Remsham. I think Remsham is kind of underrated as well right now. Uh, it, he tears through high quality low unit count armies like uh, like Atreides or um, or even Fremen. Uh, although well, Fremen is kind of a coin toss, I think the matchup. Um, if they manage to catch you off guard and and use their uh, use their worm tactics, uh, stealth tactics to to. Uh, boost their first attack you probably lose the fight um, but against Atreides even Harkonnen um, I can't think of another, another faction right now that has with Ikez <clears throat> especially against Ikez you're gonna have a e much easier or better time rather um with a Ramsham than with Vencesia. Uh, also, another fun thing, uh, as you just saw, I needed to, to redeploy that harvester, despite it being set to safe mode, because there's a bug that if you if your harvester gets um, undeployed for some reason, even if it's uh, outside of your control, so like a sandstorm, um, it will reset. Uh, it's it's uh, operation mode to greed so that's great you can lose a lot of your harvesters if you're not paying attention like I just did which is I think at that point was 6 times 40 240 uh, manpower which at this part of the game is not that big of a deal but 
it can be quite annoying in certain situations. Shiro does have like a lot of um, a lot of interesting bugs in the game still, so I hope uh, in the next few patches we'll get those figured out. Yeah, this is one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> Uh, when the Diplomatic Congress comes out. But this time I didn't do it, but I think most of the time, uh, right, because I, I already done it, uh, but I like to take diploma Diplomatic Congress, every, but no matter what I'm playing. Um, there's two sides to this. Um, one is that it de deters your opponents from attacking you, because it does have an influence cost to attack you from that point. And a lot of times people forget to break, break the truces. Like in this situation, I'm benefiting from Vernius's tech advantage. And I've been benefiting since um, since the first diplomatic congress happened. Um, and yeah, that's I think very good, very powerful. Um, it also means that you gain all the that lands red standing from from having all those truces which is also very very good on fremen you gain the extra six um, influence for having a truce with everybody it's two per so that's also i think pretty good here i'm setting on my uh, my starter card uh, to take care of those um, those uh, Fremen Raiders um, to farm some influence. I think this is something you probably should be doing if you take a uh, frightening uh, reputation on, on sort of cars. Um, getting that extra bit of influence is just never bad, honestly. And I think for the most part, um, I do leave frightening reputation on, and that's because having that extra influence is just very, very good. Um, most of the time, I think it's better if you run Zumgaron once again, um, because then you'll have a much less of a focus on on um, on gaining influence. I think then when you're predetermined to play a political game. Um, I usually also go three yellow instead of three blue when I'm playing Zumgaran because I, I think it's just a good eco helps with a lot of things. Um, in this game, my, my eco is very haggard. As you can see, I, I'm only going to get two spice fields total. And even the second one is kind of out of ways for me to take. And as I said, I was trying to make my economy run on anything but spice. I don't know. I don't think it was a especially good uh, experiment. Um, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> um, I think running Zumgaran and going uh, and going uh, going three yellow is just no brainer. Very good. Uh, here I was putting an agent on counterintelligence, or uh, I guess quote unquote early, uh, because at this point I'm I'm starting to surge ahead in in Germany, and Vernius obviously is very well known for being a good faction for assassinations, as I already uh, discussed it earlier. What do you need, um, I'm not sure if it was really worth it doing that here. Um, uh, anyway, uh, I think it it's it's just good practice. Like in most of the most of the time, um, when you're raiding spice harvesters, it's good practice to to shoot down the ornithopter before killing the harvester. Um, so yeah, <laughs> your coof was already 
um, trying to get the lobby to kill me because in his eyes I took Vel of Riches and cut off his uh, expansion, but he, I think, had a lot of free real estate going towards uh, Vernius if he wanted. Um, he's also just a very salty player for, uh, for the most part, so this is obviously not the right thing to do, poking him, but it is what it is. Um, also, as I was saying in chat, uh, Fremen with a free deep desert is also very, very strong, um, or can be at least. I don't think the, the village traits are especially powerful, although they can be, like some of the traits are extremely fucking good. Um, like having the uh, the plus twenty percent uh, for three types of buildings bonus, or the plus twenty percent on on blue buildings in any of your um, of your special regions is just ridiculously good for pushing hedge. Um, but the biggest benefit is is getting that twenty percent extra authority generation. Um, Fremen relies very much on winning the myth or two. Um, or rather, the hegemony, sorry. Which requires you to have a lot of authority. Especially because... Um, especially because Fremen, I think, especially have a hard time taking any other win condition. Um, most games these days tend to end up in um, going towards a hedge race, but, um, but other factions have at least a chance to try and push for a government or, or a govern governor or a Chom victory. Fremen not so much, they, they really struggle trying to get any other victory. You can get them to uh, a, reasonable level in Chom, like cleaning out ter territories, um, blocking other factions from taking spice. Um, if you have five or six har spice harvesters, um, you can manipulate the market easily enough that um, you can eke out the Chom victory, but that's really risky. Then of course, um, once you ally all of the sieges, you do get a chance to to be governor as Fremen, but uh, most of the time, since you don't have access to speaker, the, the most of the lobby can outvote you very very easily. So that's not worth it either. It's just a very very tough situation for Fremen to win. Um, most games, I think. Um, I think the only other faction, actually, that struggles with closing out games as much as Fremen is... Oh, well, I wouldn't say Fremen struggles with closing out games, but Fremen has no other really real options, um, is Carino, because they, they do struggle with closing out games, as I said. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Torin was upset at the minor houses for giving Vernius the, uh, the big cash injection there. Once again, I'm sending out my Sardo car to, to clean up the um, to clean up the uh, the Fremen Raiders so that I can acquire some extra influence. Um, as uh, as you can see, I'm banking quite a bit now. And I want to be uh, pushing a lot because my plan here was to take Polar Sink, which is already very risky and not like realistic in my opinion, um, and and then also since I have Crescent Crescent. Uh, um, the special region, you know, the Great Crescent special region that gives you the extra 100% water. I, was, I wanted to snipe water cellar early. Since, as I said, I was trying to build this spiceless economy 
did not work out exactly, but again, it, it wasn't an experiment. Um, even if a foolish one. Uh, here at this point, you can see that Fremen and Atreides are both trying to fight over Cho. Um, here I'm, I'm looking at Hedge, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I'm, oh look, how, look how weak I look, I'm only leading by a bit, I'm sure nobody will notice this, this research, research center just finishing. I was mildly foolish. Uh, <laughs> Um, it was very obvious by me, I think, and that, that did not uh, work out in the end there. So yeah, uh, that's lesson learned. Um, if you're trying to submarine, submarine as much as you can. If you're trying to rush, just rush. It's not worth going in between the two. Um, yeah, I did not have cruiser here, and uh, this is like a bit late to to build spacing guild, especially if you don't have cruiser. But I was a bit focused on on trying to make that. Um, Trying to make that uh, that uh, non-spice economy work. Yeah, um, here I'm building the the uh, the building that allows you to to have another additional village trade applied um, because I'm building those early, well, mid-game craft workshops and going for that hedge rush <coughs> and it helps a lot with um, with that early hedge gain um, unfortunately uh, I think it's it's genuinely too late at this point to go for that big hedge push Especially because there's a Vernius in the lobby and they can just obfuscate at this point, at any point in uh, in this game now. Um, so even if I build up that huge, uh, huge passive head spike, it's it's gonna be shut down almost immediately um, if if the Vernius player notices. Although I do get away for it with with producing like. Enough hegemony to count for taking one region, um, but uh, once again, if you rush, you rush. If you don't, just don't. Um, I should. I probably should have uh, got the the uh, the craft workshops much earlier uh, in the tech tree instead of. Uh, Taking those military up the upgrades, I should have been just straight up more greedy. Uh, but hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, here I'm leading by a few thousand uh, hegemony, and I'm thinking, oh, that's not a lot. I don't think people know this. Um, but obviously they are like watching like hawks, um, since a lot of factions these days have. Uh, a big hedge spike because I talked about how Atreides can do those seven, ten thousand uh, hegemony spikes. So can um, smugglers get quite a big hedge jump. Um, I, I, I think I won the Turin's tournament, but I don't think I, I won one of Turin's tournament uh, demonstrating that uh, the hedge spike they can do. Uh, which, by the way, shout out to Kenry for giving me the idea idea for it. Um, yes, Majesty. I I played Fremen against him, and he was smugglers, and he wanted to show me that that trick. Although I think he went a bit overboard and and abandoned too many regions and wanted to, to take back too many regions at the same time. Um, but after perfecting the math, I I managed to to make that work. 
And now, I, I think I included, it's it, the exact math is not in the guide, um, but but a general idea of the, the hidden hidden stack in Jutsu is, is in the guide that I wrote for smugglers. Um, you can see that in the, uh, in turns, on turn server. Um, in the Shaikhulud Chronicles, um, sometimes the channels are weird and they uh, they act up, and you don't see every channel. So Shaikhulud Chronicles might not show up for you, but uh, but um, but if you you ping a mod or something, they will they will uh, give you the directions. To that guide uh, here as I said I was trying to snipe water sellers and as you can see I did um, I think this is not a consistent strategy for most factions sniping charters is uh, it's an art I'm not very well versed <laughs> in this particular art I'll be honest um, here I was checking why that raiding party started to go against me and what effects the desolation has exactly because um, because I wasn't sure if they would make it but obviously they are not making it uh, going through the desolation is, is not possible I don't think really any infection or so uh, sorry about that cat break um, yeah uh, here I'm trying to contemplate where to expand to next uh, I think I correctly determined that taking my second spice at this point is advised especially because both Fremen and Atreides are choming um, with my meager plus 200 income, I'm never going to contest that chome, so... Um, so I need, to, I need to fix my eco somehow. I also built military factory earlier, which, um, which greatly increases the upkeep for my troops. Um, I think command center, or what's it, whatever it's called, the... the main base building that gives you plus 10 command points does counteract it for the most part but we are ready. Um, it does make your, your troop upkeep much much higher so you want to make sure your eco can handle that and while mine can it's not exactly ideal for choming which you do want to chome I think in most games, it's worth it to contest Chome. Um, if you have an Ikaz in the lobby, you might want to consider not doing that and instead uh, contesting uh, Lensred, as I am right now. But I think in this game, this was just a mistake. Um, here, Shagalub is going to eat well as I clear out the Fremen uh, Spice Harvesters. Um, at this point, I don't mind losing the the conscripts. I, I have a Ramsha amount, so ideally I want um, my army to be full elite units, and I want, especially, <laughs> I want uh, a lot of artillery drones. Um, and yeah, this is where, where the fun begins, as Anakin Skywalker famously proclaims. Um, this is where... I'm going to be going to be hit for the rest of the game uh, in non-stop fighting um, here uh, Koof attacked me into me um, without realizing that I built my army to counter his basically um, I was expecting him to run Gurney I was surprised to find uh, that he was running Duncan I don't think you ever want to run Duncan Idaho on the Trades, ironically. Um, his hero abilities are basically a meme. Um, you 
ideally you don't want your hero to die and have to pay for him to get back. Although I don't think you have to pay if you run on Duncan, but whatever. You don't want downtime on your heroes. Um, <clears throat> or at least you want as little downtime as possible. Um, so taking Duncan just so he dies all the time and gets maybe a little stronger is generally not a good idea and it's even a worse idea to, to retreat him in a battle here. Um, I think he, he should have just slapped Duncan Idaho stay and probably get one or two of my units killed um, instead of retreating because Unfortunately, it's, yeah, it's just not very useful for him. Um, but yeah, uh, obviously very well coordinated attack with uh, with Fremen, as is going to be the norm in this game. Um, I'm not sure why they thought that uh, slowing down my economy here was that important. Um, as you can see, he didn't even target my my passive hegemony with the uh, with the with the rebel rebel operation. But maybe they were already collaborating with Vernius that he would um, disable craft workshops. I don't know. Um, strange that it looks like um, uh, the obfuscation does not show up but maybe I missed it in the video now um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Vernius at this point has uh, obfuscated uh, um, craft workshops so it means we're in for the long haul it's gonna be a long game of pure suffering it's most um, most games that have uh, craft shops or obfuscated are here. Um, Fremen is using their uh, rebel operation to try and uh, and take my army apart. Um, yeah, I removed my resource station in the hopes that maybe they'd stop their attack, but it was very stupid. Um, I did not. Breed one was never going to work at this point. It was too late. Um, but yeah, here I was thinking about um, putting imperial mandate on labor rights, and I wanted to check who was the highest on Chome, but uh, I couldn't because you can't do that while the lens red vote is up. And I assumed it was Fremen, and I assumed wrong, so I, it's a good thing I didn't do that. Um, because uh, Fremen was the only faction that was um, that was contesting the eventual Atreides Chome rush. Right, that's not really a rush, just the Atreides Chome in general. Yeah, um, this is a very well organized attack on. Uh, trying to disable my my artillery. I'm not sure why If the goal is to to, to disable my artillery so that I can't really fight their full armies um, Why they're running away from the fight there um, They probably Could have Wormed their infiltrators into my artillery drones. and I'm just stuck then <laughs> um, I think my army cannot take on a full Fremen army as as uh, divided as it was. Um, yeah, here I'm trying to throw off aggro. Um, obviously, it's not gonna work. Um, they are well aware of the potential. Um, the potential of, uh, of what Carino can do at this point. Um, um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm easily uh, fighting back all three attacking factions here. Um, I don't, not super easily, but 
point that they can't really take any territory from me. Um, here, I, I absolutely despise this uh, mechanic where you can't move your troops unless they are out of combat. So sometimes other troops remain in combat for longer than, uh, than some, so you can't move your entire army immediately. I think it's an extremely annoying thing, but it's one of the many, many little bugs this game has. So, yeah. Um, yeah the, the, this is an interaction I was unaware of before, um, where the, the rebels would trigger on the closest, um, closest army unit instead of uh, staying on the... Uh, Staying on the village. Um, I don't think they managed to kill them. No, they, they do manage to kill one of the tanks. Um, but even then, it, it was not enough uh, for me to lose that fight, thankfully. Um, but yeah, that's an interaction that I was not aware of. And as you can see there, it kind of caught me off guard. And I almost lost that. Uh, fight there and uh, yeah uh, they removed my military factory so I had to rebuild it um, and yeah I I also did not notice that I was very low on supply at this point so those Sardaukar could have easily starved in the desert and I would not have noticed which would have been really bad uh, so that also was a good move on putting the rebels on my uh, my uh, my fuel because the fuel cells fuel fuel factories uh, produce water um, if you if you take the tech. So, yeah. um, at this point, I think Fremen staying on the Plaskut region is extremely greedy. They're not doing that much damage to my eco by killing a few more of the plastic factories. Um, and at this point, I, I have the chance to inter uh, intercept them. So it's not that worth it. Um, I was suspect suspecting at this point that Fremen were kind of doing this on purpose. Um, and they were just kind of pretending to help this this war effort out. Uh, I'm sure Turin will have a video out of the game, so we'll we'll be enlightened enlightened once that comes out. But um, I wasn't sure if it was an intentional tactic there to just you know pretend to be helping but still building up uh, building up Solari for that Chome victory. <coughs> Uh, and eventually I do try and, and use that as an excuse to be left alone, but obviously it's not enough to convince the others to to leave me be with uh, my haggard territories. I think this is this is a, a one thing that especially newer players are very easily tunneled into. Um, I'm leading on hege hegemony right now. But I don't have a way to expand. Like um, in in this game in particular, if Fremen are doing their job and, and are keeping me from expanding and attacking me every time I move my army out, I had no way of expanding here. So, well, I had that one region that I was uh, <laughs> I made into a sanctuary basically, but. Um, But yeah, it was not um, it was not ideal. Um, at this point, I'm not going to have a lot of uh, options. Um, but yeah, if if I would have put my uh, my second base on that fuel cell region, um, this would have been a much more even fight. Um, with Fremen, I wouldn't have had to cover as much ground. They're not really using that weakness right now uh, because they thought Vernius could 
could be their third prong in that attack and try to push me push me that way uh, unfortunately though um, Vernius is not an experienced player and they don't know how much potential the Vernius army has uh, Vernius is a very high skill ceiling faction and, and it's, they're very very hard to play I cannot play them, so, them myself um, I'm not especially good on them um, I can't really pump their army to the right amount, but I've seen them uh, be used to quite the effect, um, especially by Grey and, and good friend of Heliomains. Um, at this point, I was trying to get uh, to get um, speaker as maybe like a haggard governor. Governor uh, win, but uh, I don't know why they put portfolio on me here. I think that was probably the biggest mistake this whole game anybody ever made. Um, there was a lot of mistakes, as I said previously, but that was that was the most egregious one. Um, I was never going to be able to show this game. Um, it's just a baffling choice, if I'm being honest. Like denying me two extra influence when I'm already like getting bullied out of Lensrad is also a questionable choice. But maybe there was some arcane reason I'm unaware of. I I I would be happy to be enlightened. Um, so do leave a comment if you if you figure it out. Um, yeah, this is. <laughs> Finally, the moment I take my second fucking spice wheel uh, this whole game. Mm, even if, another thing about taking that fuel cell region for my second base instead of next to Polar Sink, I would have been uh, able to take this second uh, spice wheel much earlier, and then later on I could have taken the third in the middle, um, which would have been. Which would have put me in a much better position to later on after the portfolio passed um keep contesting on on show and uh and uh stop the stop the chome push from atreides um but yeah uh it is what it is um I was trying out new things and uh, <laughs> and uh, failing terribly because of it, but that's how you learn. Yeah, uh, Atreides is trying to take the Vel of Vel of uh, Riches again. I'm not sure why they were telling so hard on the Vel of Riches. I'm not sure why they are thumpering the deep desert there either. <laughs> Um, maybe they are pre-thumpering so that their own armies don't get thumpered on their retreat. Who knows? Beyond, like, completely beyond me. Um, here, uh, the Fremen try and push my main base on uh, near the sink. I think this is this is the right thing to do. This is what they should have done from the start. Um, Because this way, it doesn't matter that I can beat both of their armies um, when when they are alone. If they can keep me busy and kill my second base, I'm out of the game for the most part. Um, <clears throat> although uh, this game might be the, the counter argument to that, because uh, throughout this whole game, I I do stand a chance of winning, even even at the very end there. I don't uh, make a blunder. I maybe could have could have gone for a for a victory in the end, but anyway, hindsight is twenty twenty. I was kind of um, <laughs> I was also taunting Koof here, which is again not the smartest thing to do. I thought he was going to take it as a joke because it kind of was. Um, 
I was just trying to tell him that maybe he should try a different tactic here. Um, because, like, doing the exact same thing every time and getting thrown back every single time, I'm not sure what he was expecting. Uh, he should have joined that, um, that rush on, on my base much, much earlier. Um, here I'm saying they're handing the win to Fremen to try and uh, push the threat off. Um, I wasn't entirely lying here. Um, I think Fremen had a pretty good, um, pretty good jam chance still. Yeah, he claimed I boxed him in, but I think he could have went towards uh, Vernius more if he wanted to. If he was really that boxed in there, um, but anyway. I think um, I think I was right in a bit in in them handing Fremen the win, uh, sort of there. Um, if if Fremen is a bit more, um, what's a good word? Sneaky, I guess. Um, they could have snuck a lot of hegemony by. Uh, by just very slowly coming up on on second behind me, as they are doing right now. Um, but taking sync and, and something else might have helped as well. I think Atreides was way too tunnel division tunnel vision on trying to kill me at this point. Um, Vernius might have been the only other player who realized that he gains nothing from. Uh, <laughs> From uh, from fighting me here, um, I'm also trying to um, still throw some threat over to Fremen. Um, uh, I think partly due to an experience, Goof is not especially aware that Fremen. Um, with how much hegemony and how much their territory they have, probably haven't built their um, research center yet. They also are not aware, of course, that I have built mine. Um, they probably didn't notice my fluctuation in hegemony there. Uh, so they, th they, they still think that I am probably on, uh, on, on, uh, I don't have a research center just yet. Or, yes. Uh, I probably should have, at this point, deleted the research center. And that could have thrown the... Um, that could have thrown the threat off, maybe. Uh, I also, at this point, noticed that Trades was on 39% Chome, so calling that out, maybe... Um, maybe <laughs> that helps. Um... But, uh, yeah, <laughs> Torn, Torn told me to quit complaining. Um, I think he called it diva politics at some point when, uh, when I'm calling around different people and trying to, to, to throw a threat off. It's very entertaining. Um, I find that the, I think the, 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 the um, I think it's an apt way of describing it like diva politics like you're trying to you know you're you're in the lead and you're trying to just throw off threat everywhere um goof is just mad goof is just salty so who cares i'm having the time of my life at this point honestly like defending 3v1 um stomping out those those uh fremen rebellions um, the Vernius assassin, the Hacker, the Vernius assassination attempt. Man, that was ah uh, oh, the the cross map assassination. That that one is a special one for sure. Um, especially because the, the, this this baffled me. I'm not sure why he was only on fourteen percent at this point. He should have been feeding 
his assassins into the the uh, the cell that is on that is next to the Polish thing, because that obviously is a cell. Like that was what do you need, that was that that's, that is the easiest point of uh, attack for an assassination there. Um, I think some people th might think that um, the lower your assassination progress percent, the lower the chance of detection, but the, the chance of detection is, is flat. Like if, if it is determined by how many agents you have on counterintelligence, how many agents they have on the assassination attempt, and the, the amount of monitoring stations you have, so the little anti-stealth buildings, blue anti-stealth buildings you can build, the more of those you have, the, the lower the, the, the detection threshold, threshold becomes. Um, so that those are especially useful now, those buildings. Uh, not just for uh, noticing that uh, the, the San Vietnam that, uh, that Fremen are engaged in, but also um, Um, but also just in general, having stealth detection is good, I'd say. Um, I was also here trying again to throw aggro off of me. Maybe they noticed I've been just gaining hegemony only on text. Um, and I had no real other chance of, um, of making anything work. I probably should have taken Polar Sync earlier at this point. Um, I was too pressured to do it. Um, so I don't think I could have, but maybe. But anyway. Yeah, I, th I thought um, I thought maybe I could throw the aggro off there um, if I kept on the same amount of hedge and then hedged my bets to uh, to win on spice or or uh, or something um, something that I like to do on Carino um, is you can use the Kronos. Um, as a mobile air base, right? So what you can do is send the Kronos to the other end of the map if there's any neutral territories for you to take there and just take it uh, if you have high, high enough authority. Like if you're capped on 500 authority for the rest of the game, um, then you should look into trying to take that, um, to take that territory. Yeah, that's obviously uh, ideal for uh, those. And like every little bit counts, especially in craft shop less um, and hege hegemony end games. Um, you want to push um, any territory you can. Yeah, uh, the Vernius attempt here obviously was going to fail. Um, he didn't take away Emperor's eyes, which is extremely powerful. It's basically three three agents for you. Um, it's just very very good, in my opinion. Um, I think somebody at some point said it's the best tech in the game. I. I wouldn't go that far, but it is extremely good. Um, I think my favorite tech probably is the um, the Vern tech for Fremen. Um, I think it's Idai al Krab, something along those lines. Um, it's just very good. It's it's really really fun. It, it it's what gives the the faction its um, its identity. It's um. It synergizes very well with Charney, who I think is the optimal um, hero to take in, in this meta. 
Off aim could be good with or can be good if you want to split push or have to defend on multiple fronts and you can um, and you have beefy enough troops to try and defend on lower troop counts. Um, it's especially good if you're trying to split push and take territory. Um, I think it's it's better on the offense than on the defense. Although most people would will say that it's good, it's better on the defense, but I tend to disagree with that. Um, here I thought maybe I get a <laughs> a bit of relief. Um, maybe I can flex uh, the Reverend Mother and and get the spacing build guild resources, um, hoping that maybe if Vernius does not get involved in the vote, I could outvote Fremen and Atreides because of the doubling. Um, but then I realized it's not going to happen, so I instead just. Uh, went for diplomatic congress. So this was helping me twofold. Um, I noticed that Atreides um, at some point, and I'm not sure if it's at this point, but uh, was switching over to, to Fremen. And Atreides was not too far behind on, uh, on, on hegemony, so. Um, they were, uh, if they were gonna take like White Rift or any of the uh, special regions, that would have been a problem, because Atreides is much harder to dislodge than uh, than Fremen, obviously due to ceasefire and Jessica. But ceasefire, ceasefire especially, I think ceasefire is is one of, if not the best uh, operation in the game at this point. Uh, it's just incredible. Uh, it, it can it can be new the game in so many ways. Um, yeah, here I'm removing the last cell, or I, I, at this point I think I removed the last cell from uh, from Vernius, so their assassination attempt is already gonna finish. Um, no, oh, okay. I just I just captured the major, but the, the the cell I'm removing right now is the last one. I think. Yeah. Uh, so it was never gonna finish. Uh, especially cross map with Emperor's eyes still active. I think that was kind of a kind of a foolish attempt. Um, but I think it's an attempt that had to be made. That yes, that had to be made just in case maybe I have to abandon territory and. Um, Corino especially had a hard time recovering spent territory um, because of the exorbitant authority costs. So yeah. Yeah, once again, I'm, I'm trying to use uh, Diplomatic Congress to, to slow down the, the game a bit, maybe uh, buy some time for myself. Um, I think at this point I'm also going to take uh, the fuel cell region that I did not end up being the, the, the site of my second base. Um, it is... <laughs> sorry for the shouting outside. Um, there's a... Uh, there's a playground nearby, um, and the kids do get quite, quite loud. Um, yeah, there it is. Foxes exclaiming, no, Grimio. Um, it was the Plaskrit region in the back. I think he snuck an assassin there. Uh, or at least he was attempting to sneak an assassin in there. And uh, moved, like, <laughs> mini-gamed the, the assassin through the hole. Um for the whole map. And here is, is what I was talking about. This is the most important moment of this game, I'd say. Um, here, as soon as I saw Atreides doing what they are, I should have deleted my research center. Um, because if you kill the Imperial main base, um, then whatever main base buildings you had in on that base 
are unavailable for the rest of the game for you. So yeah, uh, big mistake by me, obviously. Um, the EMP also hurt a lot here. I think that was Vernius. Um, my orbital, st uh, so my orbital strike was too late as well. Um, this this uh, this second base is unfortunately going to fall no matter what I do, basically. So it is what it is. Um, at least Atreides had to spend some money on buying those mercenaries to finish it off. Um, but yeah. Um, I basically lose the game from here, I think. Uh, or I'm thinking to myself, and um, I would be quite correct, I think. Um, this was kind of a pivotal moment in the game. Uh, another thing that is not going to happen here, but should happen, is Atreides completely focusing on um, on Fremen at this point, um, since I'm I no longer have access to to territory, and um, and I also lost uh, research research center here. This is this Cronus is also like extremely late. Um, it should have taken Cronus much much earlier, but it is what it is. Um, mistakes were made. Um, it, it's 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 the, what the game is. Lots of blunders, and they eventually they build up. And um, whoever blunders the most loses the game. <laughs> Basically, in, in most cases, I think. So yeah, uh, I made the most blunders in this game, I think. Um, I think there were a lot of things I, sh I, sh I could have done that I should have done. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, so I'm gonna win the game from here. Uh, my only option would be to try some haggard domination, maybe. Or um, or hope that uh, the fight between Fremen and Atreides um, buys me enough time so that I can uh, I can sneak in the the victory through spy stacks, but I think that's wishful thinking. Like because of how slow I'm gaining hegemony at this point. I think it was over. Like even if I do manage um, to to stop the eventual win that is coming soon, um, well, <laughs> relatively soon, um, I don't think I, I I could have closed the game out in any way. <laughs> yeah, there are architectural surveys coming up just just in time for me to 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 try and do the stupid base snipe thing that I eventually cannot do unfortunately or if I forget to do I don't know which one um, I think maybe Atreides still keeps harassing well of riches so I have to defend there we'll see in a second um, but yeah not ideal. I also should uh, should be looking at Chome right now, seeing if I can uh, if I can um, if I can maybe buy some Chome. Yeah, I am. I'm now looking at Chome since I have 13k in the bank. Um, I think also the betrayal from Fremen was a mistake here. Uh, they did not need to betray me to break the truce at this point and getting the, the spice the cost reduction is awful like especially if if there's another player choming in, in the lobby um, it's just not a good idea 
Uh, oh, I know why I'm not dying for the, uh... For the base, uh, for the base kill, it's because Fremen still keeps harassing me. <laughs> uh, even though I'm, I'm basically beat and battered and got it out of the game, um, Fremen is going to keep attacking me and keep uh, putting down um, rebellions on me. Which I, I guess did work out for them in the end, so... Maybe it was the right call, but it was a very odd choice to leave. Um, I think at this point, Fremen should have been more focused on, on going for their own win here instead of um, and instead of just tunnel visioning on, on trying to do whatever they are doing here. Um, they do have a, 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 uh, a border with Verneus, and um, if they start fighting Verneus, Verneus cannot win um, against a full Fremen army, I don't think. Um, so they probably should have been, at this point, already attacking Verneus. Uh, especially because now that they're in the lead, Verneus might also attack them. So. It's kind of a preemptive strike. <laughs> they they tried the uh, the double prong attack again. Um, I'm not sure why. If I'm being honest, uh, I lose a lot of my army here, which does suck, and I do have to let the um, I do have to let to let the. Uh, The, uh, the raid tick down. But um, it's still just taking money. Like it's not taking territory. I'm not sure what the plan is there. As you can see, I'm also now um, getting passed by Atreides as well. Um, who are trying, like, I, I, th I don't know. Like, maybe this was not a bad call because they are trying to gain hegemony here through taking my Vale of Riches. Um, but it's a, it's a very haggard attempt. Like, they've, they've done this god knows how many times already, like five, six times. And it did not work out once. Like, this is just a very good defensible position for me. It's very unlikely that they can get, get me here. I'm not sure what they're trying to do. Like, I'm honestly not sure. But yeah, as I said, they were very tunnel visioned on me here. I think it's 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 just salt at this point. Um, there's not much, um, not not much other explanation for this. Um, like they they're just not going to take that. This 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 is like the fifth time. Come on, man, <laughs> figure out you have to attack Fremen. Because, um, by the way, if you didn't know, um, there's a lot of rock, paper, scissors in this game. And the certain factions most often going to lose to certain factions. Um, so, in this case, I've, I've built my entire army to counter an Atreides army. So, most of the time, I'm going to win these, um, win these engagements. Um, but Atreides wins against Fremen almost every time because they have ridiculously high armor and if the Fremen cannot penetrate through with that first, um, first ambush then they kind of 
are just not going to win. Um, win, an enga win the engagement. So especially if you have Gurney, which Atreides in this situation does not have. But especially if you have Gurney, um, you are most likely going to beat uh, a Fremen army as Atreides. Atreides also throwing away a lot of flyers here. Like I'm, I'm just not entirely sure what's the point in, in this. What do you need, my emperor? Um, I think they are they're just being like completely tunnel vision and and uh, attacking me for the blood feud because they're pissed off. Yeah, I'm I'm taking a bio break here. Uh, there's not much going on after that oh, in the, in this period of time. So anyways, there's not much happening during the bio break, I think, unsurprisingly. Um, but uh, at this point, Atreides probably should have switched over to, to Fighting Fremen or Vernius, um, much softer targets to crack. Um, also, they, they they do have a couple of territories next to uh, their own borders that are special regions, so the hegemony gain is, is much better than that one um, completely normal region that doesn't have fuel that I have next, uh, next to the middle. Um, well of riches, obviously, as I said, is just probably not going to be break, uh, broken through. Um, I did not position my missile turrets exactly appropriately. Probably should have grouped them up much nicely, much more, much, much more nicely. Um, but I think the main goal here was to protect the. Uh, also protect the um, uh, the airfield so that I can uh, keep moving back into the fight. Um, yeah, here Koof was asking about how to beat uh, Corino army. Uh, with Duncan, you just can't. Like it's not going to happen. With with Gurney stacks, maybe. Um, but Duncan is a meme, <laughs> as I said, uh, he's, he's not a very good hero, um, it's funny though. Um, Slaughter continues. Um, so at this point, Bernie is a speaker. I think Governor is going to come up soon as well. 
um, I'm not eligible anymore because obviously uh, you need a charter for that and loss of rights uh, took away both of my charters. Yeah, there it is. Vernius is uh, recognizing that there is a governor chance, but um, giving it to Atreides or Vernius here is just bad. Uh, Atreides is very, very good at defending uh, through Ceasefire and Jessica. So, on the off chance that we are somehow unable to, to vote them out um, through through uh, loss of rights, um, the Fremen are the easiest target here. Um, they have the the least chance for Governor Governor Victory in general. So yeah. once again, <laughs> the the Fremen rebellions pop out. Uh, at some point, they do become quite annoying for me to, to deal, uh, deal with them. Especially because they, for some reason, uh, love to pop up on a few other regions. And, um, and I was relying on those artillery, artillery drones quite heavily by this point. Um, but thankfully, it's not anything that... Uh, I end up not being able to handle. I was surprised by the uh, the administrative burdens falling on the trades there. I wasn't really sure what was happening. Uh, what was happening on the spice field? I assume Fremen was attacking the trades. Um, I uh, I think that probably was the right move. But attacking it into a trade is hell, so it was not going to be very um, very effective. And I think those those uh, Fadakin running running down to Polar Sink are a good indication that it was uh, in a trade is versus Fremen fight there. Um, yeah, uh, Duncan. Not good. Uh, if if Atreides has Gurney here on full stacks, they probably would have won the fight against um, against the Fremen there. Um, but without Gurney, that's kind of a foregone conclusion. I'm trying to stop the um, stop the, uh, the the siege liberators here. Mostly. Um, because I want to see how the fight between Atreides and Fremen works out. Um, since I don't want to help Atreides too much at this point, um, they are obviously still kind of in the running. Well, not just kind of, they're still obviously in the running, being second on hegemony and still sitting on 39% chill. Um, I think they are wasting a lot of money here on mercenaries, um, which is bad if you're trying to win on Chon. They are also getting hurt a lot by those Fremen rebels from the Lensrad inside rebellions. I obviously did decline the um, the truce here. Like I, if I, if I take the. Uh, if I take the truce here, um, I have no counterplay to whatever Atreides is going to do next. Um, I'm just explaining why Kuf is mad. Um, <laughs> Turin is, is still uh, doing his haggard schemes, like, oh no, I don't have any passive cards. Meanwhile, he has a lot of free real estate. Uh, he can take from Vernius, obviously. Um, and as we saw, he can try to take it from Atreides as well. I think attacking the middle there was, was kind of um, a fool's errand as well. 
he should have been finding Werner's there. Um, the assassination was coming eventually anyway, so um, so attacking Werner's would have uh, would have at least netted uh, or net uh, net some hegemony. Uh, we're finally, finally, finally taking. Taking the uh, fuel cell in there, um, which is going to boost me up a bit on hegemony. I think this was a mistake again. Um, I probably should have sat on that and waited for the world's smallest hegemony spike with with uh, timing it with tax um, it is a flat 1600 hegemony spike um, which in these end games can be the game winning move um, and if i had research center obviously i, I would have already won so womp womp um, Fumble after fumble. The more you fumble, the less you win. Um, On vector. But yeah, I was <laughs> at this point considering um, betraying Vernius and taking my third base um, so that I can acquire some territory. Uh, but I realized that was not going to happen. Once again, from a Fremen rebellions on me, I. I'm not sure why. Um, it's not really denting my economy. Uh, it's not helping um, Fremen take that territory. Um, so that was that was a baffling choice to me, at least. I think uh, putting it on the trades um, spice regions is is much more advisable at this point. When he's sitting on forty-two chone, um, yeah, it's it's a, it is certainly a play. I think I probably should have voted, um, voted that uh, water regulations in at this point. It was going to hurt me quite a bit, but it was also going to hurt Fremen. And um, it probably would have slowed down Fremen enough that maybe a win could have been uh, possible. But obviously, loss of rights has to be pushed through there. Um, <laughs> uh, to Turin to with those last minute haggard political schemes. Um, I guess at least they're funny. Um, yeah, once again, inside rebellion, triggering, have to clean out all those from the rebels so that um, one, my eco doesn't completely tank. Two, um, I have some supply. Um, yeah, I. I I'm not sure why he was rallying from that at this point. And I'm not sh honestly, this is probably my biggest mistake this game. I should have cleaned out both of those sieges at this point for the authority and taken the uh, Plaskrit region in the middle there. Um, yeah, I'm saying we gotta start coming at this point. They can pass spike uh, just enough with um, with tax and the normal region. Um, yeah, I'm by 
benefiting a bit too much from the Vernius truce at this point. And this is what I was saying earlier, like, um, I had a truce with Vernius through a lot of the fighting. And if I had Zumgaran in this situation, then I probably would have had a better chance against, um, against um, any of, of either Atreides or, or Fremen at this point. So yeah, uh, that, that's a mistake. Just, just take Zumgaran, five head. Um, I, I don't think the Reverend Mother is very good. Uh, I've seen, like, how should I say this? I think she's more annoying to your opponents than anything else. Like, I think this is the same problem with Fenring. You're kind of just annoying your opponents and not gaining that much from his presence. Um, Obviously, maybe it's worth it for the authority. Um, I have Jerry still out. I just prefer Zumgaran. But um, maybe, maybe this game is is me learning how how Fenring is actually so much better than I thought. Because if I was able to to gather some authority through. POI is here, I probably could have closed out the game. Because I was thinking, I would have been thinking about that um, last bit of hegemony spike more. Here, I'm gonna delete one of my buildings because I wanna make sure um, that I cannot indeed rebuild the research station and missing one of my military buildings for a second there. It's not gonna do anything at this point. Um, I think at just at some point I became too too worried about the Atreides charm as well. Like it was kind of obvious he was plateauing already here. Um, yeah, here you can see. Turin is gonna try and take that um, take that Plaskrete region to to um, to take the dub on on tax, but uh, not on my watch. And when I realize I can also just take that, um, so that's what I do. And this is why I, I said that uh, Fenring might have won me the game with that um, with the extra the extra authority because after I take this region, um, I'm gonna zero out an authority, right? So if I have those POI throughout the whole game, I probably um, have a better chance to. Uh, to not lose all of that. Here, I, th I think attacking into the orbital strike was just really not, really not ideal. Um, for Fremen. Um, another thing here is, again, I'm not saying Atreides is attacking uh, Fremen. At this point, making the right to attack Fremen, um, although he should have been doing this already for a while now. Um, or attacking Vernius so that he can pick up some easy, um, easy territory. I think both of them should have uh, probably been attacking um, Both of them should have been attacking Vernice at this point and taking territory. They probably could have 2v1 bullied the hell out of Vernice. Um I have no way of expanding. Like This is the last expansion I can do for the rest of the game. Uh, my only chance would have been if they 2v1 Vernius is to um, is to take a haggard Vernius territory somehow through some Corona's shenanigans that I try at the end. Um, anyway, 
although not on uh, Bernice territory, but uh, abandoned Fremen territory. Uh, yeah, this is really close at this point. You can see the 33% show. Um, I'm well, unfortunately very far from winning here. I do not have research center. If I had research stamina and was gaining the extra 150 tax hegemony, I probably could have. Um, here I'm making the, the biggest blunder of the game, by the way. Um, I This is where me taking Diplomatic Congress every time stabs me in the back. Um, I probably should have let Atreides take that, um, take White Rift off of Fremen there. But again, it is what it is. Um, hindsight is twenty twenty. At the time I thought um, Atreides was too close um, themselves to a hedge victory um, for me to allow the capture. But I should have known better. I think it was mostly that I, I didn't realize. Um, I didn't realize the abandon. Um, I thought he just deleted um, research center to, to submarine there for a bit. Um, <coughs> sorry. But yeah, yeah. Here, Turn is saying that I'm, uh, I'm a 28 k, but uh, even with tax, I'm not going to win, right? So there isn't much I can do here. Um, either way, this one obviously will not stop. Uh, um, people from from ganging up on me. Um, Mostly because I think I was too much of a threat this whole game. Um, but once again, if I would have pushed, um, I would have pushed the um, the craft shops much earlier. Um, at like when I was at five k in Germany, I build all my craft shops and start pumping 32 passive hegemony uh, I probably would have gained a territory amount more so like 600 700 more uh, from craft workshops and that would have been enough for me to go full defense here and um, and close out the game by just waiting for tax um, but unfortunately I was trying to some trying to do something else with um, with going for that early red tech against Fremen. I should have realized Fremen was not being as aggressive as, as they usually are and probably should have um, taken advantage of that. Here I'm also I'm, I'm making uh, several mistakes. <laughs> Here I'm trying to uh, discourage Turin from attacking me again um, or, or rebelling me again so that um, by by saying I will start selling chomes so that Atreides can win I should have been selling chome <laughs> at this point uh, chome, chome dilution was in effect so if I sell all my shares I gain a lot of um, authority here and then I can um, actually um, actually have enough authority to, to maybe close out the game and obviously threatening to sort of start selling Chome at this point is not going to deter the Fremen from uh, attacking me <clears throat> so that was an unfortunate mistake as well uh, I think one of my biggest um, weaknesses also 
this was another huge mistake. I didn't realize that um, when I lost my uh, Vernius Truce like one hour ago in the game, um, I, I lost all my uh, armor and gear. So it is what it is. Also, I have no idea what the eye of Trades is attacking me here again. Like, this is just obviously a mistake. Um, they were never going to take Vell of Riches. This is just not doing anything right now. I'm not winning on tax. Meanwhile, Fremen has the abandoned region that. Um, that they, they can retake at any point or more specifically they can time it with tax to just win the game and eventually uh, I will also realize this but it will be too late I, I will realize this because I, um, I start looking for territory to, to snipe somehow um, Earlier, I wanted to snipe the territory that is above Siege Tower, the Plaskrete region, but obviously Turin has already taken it in by, by this point. Um, and then I noticed that the Worm's Nest was abandoned. Yep, there it is. I also realized it's gonna soon be uh, soon be uh, available for capture, and tax is coming up. Which means Turin is just going to close out the game if he takes it. I also path my Cronus wrong, so I drive it directly into the Kraken. Um, this also naturally triggers Koof's blood feud, um, and he sends the Kraken after the after the Cronus into my army. And it stops me from um, uh, stops me from being able to send my artillery drone down uh, to Vernius. I also realized too late that I can do this. Um, and here, my artillery drones are stuck because of the the Kraken. Um, and because of that, I'm just going to not be able to not be able to, uh, to, f to take that fight um, with the Fremen there. Mm, I don't think I would have had enough time anyways um, to take that. Um, I, I was genuinely annoyed a bit at this point that they were they kept um, attacking me, like Atreides with that Well of Riches attempt again, and then Vernius was sitting on my borders for god knows how long. They should have seen this one coming, I, I told them this was coming, and they did nothing about it. It was just a very weird decision making on their part, at least to me. But this is mostly an experience, like these two players have not played enough um, multiplayer games to know all the intricacies and how you want to be playing these abandoned games that uh, Fremen is, is playing right now. Um, but yeah, if, even if I win this fight, which I think I just don't, um, I was never going to be able to to uh, decapture or liberate Worm's Nest in time. I probably should have built some hammers this game as well to try and counter Fremen. Um, but it was so back and forth for a while I, I could not figure anything out. I eventually start um, yeah and I don't know why uh, they're still sitting at my border while this is happening. It is so utterly stupid. But yeah, I start uh, selling Chome at this point, that maybe Atreides can close out the game instead. 
just for the funnies, you know, last minute chaos bomb. Um, but Chom Dilution is not in effect anymore, so I'm not gaining any authority either. So it is what it is. I should have done this earlier. I should have realized uh, Atreides was plateauing. Um, I was telling the traders to auto buy. Didn't realize they had no. Uh, didn't realize they have. Uh, they had no money left. Um, but yeah, uh, as, as you can see, this is. Um, this just shows how how much wherewithal um, Carino can have in this game, even with one main base and um, and um, and one uh, and uh, and like three v one ing through that whole game basically um, I still was able to um, I still was able to to almost eke out a victory at the end there so it just shows how how strong Carino actually is. I still think they have, still have a hard time, like in a very high tier, high competence lobby, they have a hard time closing out games. Um, but uh, yeah, they are a very, um, very tough, tough faction. They can take a lot of beating and come out, uh, come out swinging still. So I, uh, I think, uh, as, as the meme thumbnail says, uh, Carino can, can do this all day. But anyway, thank you for, uh, if you got this far into the video, I'm going to be uploading a more li uh, live commentary probably, because um, commentating past games is, is a bit less engaging, I think, for audiences. Um, and otherwise, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is the House of Dog, and uh, I'm Sunny. I'm signing out. Goodbye.